Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I wanted to introduce a new sponsor that I have for my channel, and that sponsor is Nutrisense. Nutrisense is a continuous glucose monitor program where you can sign up and they provide access to getting continuous glucose monitors. Because continuous glucose monitors, or CGMs, are a prescription product, um, you can't just order one as an individual. So Nutrisense is a program through which you can get a continuous glucose monitor. And then they have an app that goes along with the program where you can you know, see all of your blood glucose information. They also have dietitians on staff. So it's kind of like, instead of just having a continuous glucose monitor and trying to figure it all out yourself, they provide the service of explaining everything and helping like hold your hand through the process. So what I'm gonna do in this video is just go through the process of applying the CGM on myself. I have never tried one before. I have been interested. It's becoming so much more popular now, um, which I absolutely love. Having a clear picture of what your blood glucose is doing throughout the day and throughout the night can be such a huge tool in figuring out what to do with your diet and lifestyle in order to feel your best and really to optimize your health. So for me, for example, I know because of my A1C that my blood sugar is under control. It's doing well. And the A1C is a really good way to get a snapshot of the last three months of your blood sugar. It gives you an average. But what the CGM gives you that an A1C wouldn't is just the daily ups and downs and getting into the nitty gritty of which specific foods and lifestyle choices are affecting your blood sugar in certain ways. So I have had comments from people saying that they're confused about even why I would check my A1C because I'm not diabetic. As if thinking about your blood sugar only becomes important if you are diagnosed with the disease of diabetes. And of course, when you have diabetes, it becomes even more important to have a handle on your blood sugar and know the ins and outs and the details of what's going on. But I think it's also almost equally as important to know what your blood sugar is doing even when you're healthy or without diabetes. Because diabetes is not something that happens overnight. It's not like you're perfectly healthy and then you wake up one day and you're diagnosed with diabetes. It is a slow, gradual process that can be influenced by diet and lifestyle choices. So if you start to look at your blood sugar early on when you're still healthy and you start to see some trends, maybe you see your blood sugar gradually rising, or maybe you discover that there's certain types of foods or certain times of day that you eat or do exercise that affects your blood sugar in a certain way, you can really use it as a preventative measure and maybe never even get to the point of having yourself diagnosed with diabetes. That would be like the best of all possible worlds, right? So I do think that the CGM movement that is going on right now is an incredible thing for people who already have diabetes. And I think it's a huge tool that's gonna help a ton of people and already has helped a ton of people who are already at that point. But I also absolutely love the movement among healthier people or people that haven't crossed that threshold yet to get a handle on their blood sugar and to understand it better and to just keep themselves in that state of health. So like I said, my A1C, uh, my average blood sugar over the last three months is in a really good range and I'm very happy with it. But what I'm interested to see with this CGM is how individual foods affect my blood sugar and affect my life because how your blood sugar goes affects your life. So I am going to be using it to just kind of see the trends of my blood sugar going up and down throughout the day, just eating my regular diet. I just kind of want to get a picture of how my regular diet looks as far as my blood sugar levels. And then possibly I want to try to test certain things, see how my body responds. So I think it's really important to figure out for yourself what your carb threshold might be. Just the amount of carbs you can eat either in a day or in a meal or in a sitting where your body can handle it, where your blood sugar doesn't spike too high. That's a great thing to learn and that's something you can learn from a CGM. But beyond that, you can also learn how specific types of food affect your blood sugar. 
you could, for example, have two different foods, but each of them have the same number of carbohydrate grams in them. And one of them may spike your blood sugar a lot higher than the other. It's not just a mathematics game where plus this many grams of carbs equals this high of a blood sugar rise. It doesn't always correlate with the number of carbs you eat. And I think one of the reasons for that is there are certain foods that are inherently inflammatory to our bodies just because of you know our own biochemistry and the place we're starting in. And when our body has a stress on it, it can raise your blood sugar, completely separate of the raise in blood sugar you would get just from the carbohydrate grams. So if I eat something that's very inflammatory to me, regardless of the number of carbs in it, it can cause my blood sugar to rise, and I can see that maybe that's a problem food, aside from just the number of grams of carbs that's in that food. So some things that I'm interested in kind of testing out and just having the information about how it's affecting my blood sugar is things like my coffee in the morning. I'm curious to see if that gives me any kind of a raise in blood sugar. And obviously coffee and the way I have it, coffee with cream, very, very low in carbs. But I'm curious to see if there's any kind of a stress response or an inflammatory response to that that might be pushing my blood sugar a little higher than I would want it to. I'm also very interested in testing out other forms of dairy like cheese and yogurt. I've been doing a lot of homemade yogurts recently and I'm really curious to see what those do to my blood sugar. And then beyond that, I'm just gonna kind of be playing with it, whatever kind of comes up to test out. I just thought it would be very interesting. So I feel like for the first week, I'll probably just try to eat as normally as I can, just the same way that I've been eating for a while now just to get a good baseline of what my blood sugar looks like eating normally. And then after that week, I'm gonna start playing around a little bit and hopefully I'll be able to get some video on that and share just some experiments that I do um, just looking at my blood sugar. So after you complete the order and the health questionnaire um, through NutriSense, they will, if you are approved, send you a box like this. And inside it has the CGM. So of course the CGM is here. They have a, a adhesive patch that you put over the CGM to keep it in place while you wear it for the two weeks. And then there's a quick start guide. I have already downloaded the app. So um, I have that and then the app directed me to this article that they have online that um, is just how do I put on my CGM. So I am going to be following this exactly. So that's everything that's gonna be in the box, alcohol wipe, CGM applicator, CGM sensor, and the bandage. And then they just have a step-by-step -step guide that I am going to follow. Gotta take off my sweater because I need my arm free. So the only place that the Abbott Freestyle Libre, which is the CGM brand, has been approved for is on the underside of the arm or the back of the arm where there's the most fat. So I'm gonna just go ahead and open this up and get everything out and laid out before I get started. So this is the sensor itself. This is the applicator. And then there's a couple of alcohol wipes. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe my arm, the spot where I'm gonna put the CGM with the alcohol wipe. Now, following step three, I'm gonna peel the top off of the CGM itself. And I'm gonna take the bottom off of this. Come on thing, there we go. There we go. Next, step four, line up the dark marks on the sensor applicator and sensor pack. So let's see, that is, oh, this dark line on here with this dark line on here. And um, connect the two pieces using a hard surface. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna change the camera angle so you can see me actually put it on my arm. So now we should be able to see, oh, the little needle there on the CGM. And um, it says don't set the applicator down and don't be nervous because it might feel like a tiny pinch or nothing at all. Step seven, firmly, push firmly to apply the sensor. It doesn't hurt, you're all set. Okay, so I am going to on the underside of my arm here, where it's the fattiest part, 
Here we go. I did not feel a pinch at all. There it goes. Oh, that was it. When it clicked, I didn't feel anything. Now I can feel just a tiny bit of a burn, but it's really not much, much at all. So there it is. Now I'm going to put the adhesive bandage over it. And it says if you have any kind of an issue with applying it, you can't take it off and put it back on. It's just, it's done if you take it off. So I'll show you this little sticky real quick here is there's like the circle in the middle. You're not supposed to take the paper off of the circle in the middle. You just take off the four pieces uh, on the outside. I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna put the circle right on the CGM and press that down. And there it is. That is done. Now to figure out how to activate it and connect it to the app. So I opened the app here and then I'm hitting the three lines on the side, going to settings down here and then sensor. Oops, I hit sensor and it says, oops, you don't have a sensor set up. Please activate your sensor, activate new sensor. Right there, ready to activate. All right, so I guess I just do this. Will it tell me when something happens? Technology, ready to activate. Oh, it did something. It buzzed. Activation successful. It says, great job. Your CGM is successfully activated. You can begin scanning your sensor in one hour. Make sure to scan your sensor at least once every eight hours. There we go. And then there is some way to manually calibrate it, which I will be exploring because I do have a glucose monitor that I can test my glucose on and then I'll see um, how well the NutriSense correlates and you can calibrate it if it's off, which is great. And then from the dashboard here, there's the plus sign here at the bottom. And you can put in like your meals and activity and all this stuff. So you can really, really track, you know, what you're doing and then the response your blood glucose has. And yeah, so I feel like that was really, really simple and easy. And I'm really curious to see what information I get from this. Um, it'll be fun. That if nothing else, it'll be interesting and fun. So anyways, I will have more on my CGM experience coming up in another video. If you are interested in more information about NutriSense, I have a link down below. I do earn a little bit of a commission if you go through the sign up process with your email. Um, you don't even have to sign up to buy a CGM, just if you go and sign up and put in your email, I get a little bit of a kickback. It helps support my channel. I try really hard to bring sponsors to the channel that I feel like will resonate with my audience and this was no exception. I feel like with the keto crowd that tend to watch my videos, um, glucose, blood glucose, and blood glucose, glucose say that a bunch of times fast, um, blood glucose monitoring is something that's really important to a lot of people in this community. So I'm excited to be sharing about it with you guys and kind of sharing my experience. And um, if it's interesting to you, go ahead and click the link down below, check it out, get more information. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today, and I will see you again in another video.